everybody, Danny here, and I'm going to try something new today. I'm going to try doing a commentary on a video. And props to Random DCE for making an ear rape copy of this on his Blip TV channel, because I wouldn't have even known of this video had he not do this. There's a guy here on YouTube that made a top 10 list of the most attractive female Sonic characters. And since DCE skipped over some of the Archie characters, primarily because he had no knowledge of them, I'm going to cover the entire video. Now before we begin, let me just state this. I'm aware that there are a lot of people out there that really like Sonic characters for different reasons. Now, I'm willing to understand if someone thinks a character is cute in a way that you want to pinch their cheeks or maybe give them a hug. You know, like you would a puppy. That I can totally understand, but the minute it becomes sexual in any way, that's when I personally draw the line. That's just not my cup of tea, if you know what I'm saying. So naturally, this list weirds me out. But not only that, this guy does such a piss-poor job in explaining his choices, if he explains them at all, which only makes the video look worse, despite the fact that this is actually pretty well made on a technical standpoint. So for this video, I'm also going to try using an avatar, like how some people use Pokemon when they do commentaries. My avatar of choice today is going to be Shadow Link. So with all that said, Let's move on to the video. Sonic the Hedgehog, one of the greatest and most attractive characters ever thought up. And already I can see we're doomed from the start. He can run at sound speed, take out enemies in a flash, and best of all, he's blue colored and knows how to handle the females. First of all, what does being blue have to do with anything? And second of all, which continuity are you referring to? Because if this is the Archie comics you're referring to, okay, I'll give you that. Because he did have several girlfriends. But if it's the game continuity, the one continuity that most people are familiar with, then that statement is just an outright lie. Speaking of females, the Sonic universe might also be classified as hot chick heaven because there's such a mess of very beautiful and tough women that it'll make you love the franchise even more. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing Topaz there, because that is the only human Sonic character to even show up in this video. And since Valentine's Day is around the corner, I've been inspired to make a top 10 list of the most beautiful female Sonic characters. Grab yourself a snack and a glass of orange juice, and try not to reach through the screen because here we go! Well, since we're going uber Sonic nerd here, that snack and orange juice bit, it clearly should have been a chili dog joke, so disappointment! Also, that bit of you running in the end, it really made you look like a jackass. It's not even funny kind of jackass. Just stupid kind of jackass. Number 10. Try this question on for size. Who chases and hugs Sonic all the time and wields a powerful hammer? Hmm, I wonder who on earth that could be. Why, it's Amy Rose, of course. Though more of a cutie than a hottie, you can't deny the fact that she's still attractive. Two things that make her attractive are the fact that she wears a dress, and when have you ever seen three big, very smooth arcs of hair sticking out of a person's forehead? I haven't. I guess you either don't watch a whole lot of anime or just don't pay that much close attention, but weird hairstyles like that run rampant in anime for both male and female characters. It's common knowledge, dude. So, once again, Amy Rose is lovely. That is, until she goes berserk and starts hitting stuff with her hammer. Who's at number 9? So, let me get this straight. You only like Amy because she wears a dress and has bangs. It is possible to find attractiveness in someone that is not solely based on looks. I mean, you're not even going to bring up some personality facts? Such as Amy acting like a big sister to some characters, she can be very brave, she's very strong. I mean, those are just as important qualities as appearance. It's this alien plant girl from a distant planet, Cosmo from Sonic X. Okay, let's suspend reality here and let's pretend that Cosmo is not a plant. Hell, let's pretend she's not even a Sonic character. Let's pretend she's a flesh and blood human being. 
She's a fucking child! Where are your standards? I mean, look, most of these characters on this list are considered underage. That's beyond our control. That's just how Sega set up the ages. But, my god, Cosmo, seriously? She arrived on the character's planet to deliver a message saying that the galaxy was under attack by a force called the Metarex. She doesn't do much except tell people to stop fighting and focus on the real matter at hand. The real reason she lands at the number 9 spot is that she becomes Miles Tails Prower's sweetheart, something Tails needed for a long while. Numero 8. Cream the Rabbit's mother, Vanilla. She's attractive and is the size of an average human mother. What really surprises me about her is that the leader of Team Chaotix, Vector the Crocodile, falls in love with her. Kinda silly, don't you think? Maybe to you, you think it's silly, but maybe to other people, they don't. She's another character that doesn't do much, but in a Season 3 episode of Sonic X, she helps Chris Thorndike get into space to fight the Metarex along with Sonic and friends. You know, considering the fact that Vanilla is one of the very few Sonic characters that are, is actually a mother, I'm surprised you're not delving more into that whole topic, because that can be considered a quality of attractiveness for a male. You know, you really do need to come up with some better reasons for why you're picking these characters the way you are. What number's next? Seven, of course. Wave the Swallow from Sonic Riders. People always root for the good guys, but sometimes the bad guys steal the show. Her mechanical IQ is equal to Tails. She also happens to be the smartest member of the Babylon Rose. I wonder why she isn't the leader. There is more to being a leader than just being smart. Sometimes your leader is your most physically strong. Sometimes your leader is the bravest. Sometimes your leader can just rally up enough support from the people. All of these important qualities, and all of these are qualities that Wave does not have. Like Jet the Hawk and Storm the Albatross, her specialty is riding the airboards called Extreme Gear. With two very long and smooth feathers extending from her head to her calves and droopy eyes, Wave will rock your socks. If only we could see her take wing. Well, maybe some of us don't want to see her take wing. I know I sure as hell don't. Particularly because I'm afraid to know just what the hell you're implying with that statement. Numero 6. To call the Echidna from Sonic Adventure 1. Named after an ancient Mayan city of the same name, to call is the daughter of Chief Pakakamak. She's yet another character that hardly does a thing, except beg her father to stop being so greedy. This is the third character you've put on this list and have stated that they barely do a thing in this series. And since this is a list based on attractiveness... Well, with all three of these characters, you did not give any reasons other than the fact that they are hot. Let's ignore the fact that these are animals. I can't help but feel like you're a really shallow person. I hate to be repeating myself, but there's more to a person than looks alone. She also traps herself inside the Master Emerald so that the Water God Chaos doesn't rain terror upon the land. So then why did you say that she barely does anything before? I mean, is her sealing herself in chaos within the Master Emerald so the world doesn't get destroyed just not important enough to you? When you're the daughter of a person in the highest power, you need to look your best, and to call delivers perfectly. I am not going to repeat myself here. That's why she's number six. Number one, two, three, four, five! Ah, ah, ah! Please don't ever make a joke like that again. It's not funny! Mina Mongoose from the Sonic Archie comics. How could you go wrong with a girl who looks like this? She could run nearly as fast as Sonic, and she went from being a freedom fighter to being a pop star singer. Next to Princess Sally, she looks more humanoid than the other characters. I don't know, she still looks just as much of an animal as every other character. Who could top someone who has long mauve hair? This female, standing at number four, Blaze the Cat. One word, pyrokinesis. How would you like to have that superpower? Okay, I gotta admit, that would be pretty cool. I mean, Blaze could play around in the Himalayas for hours and she would be perfectly fine. Also, her 45 degree ponytail makes her look like a Native American. Something tells me that somebody out there is going to find that offensive. 
I really love the fact that her love interest is the telekinetic hedgehog Silver. The combination of mind moving and fire superpowers make these two a reliable couple. Sorry that I'm being a buzzkill here, but Sega has not openly stated that Blaze and Silver were meant to be a couple. That's more of a fan interpretation than anything. But what really lands Blaze in the number four spot is that her attitude is apparently more different from the other females. How is her attitude different from the other females? Explain, boy! You know, for all you know, you've got people watching your video that are just not as familiar with the Sonic characters as you. They're gonna need some explanations as to why you're making that claim. Next up is number three. What's better than having a female with cascading quills? How about a female with cascading quills and hair? Julie Sue, the Echidna, another Archie comic exclusive, has that feature. She's smart, knows exactly what to do as a freedom fighter, and even trained Amy once. She's also the girl of Knuckles' dreams. <laughs> Lucky him. Her older self in the series, Mobius, X years later, is just downright hot. Just look at that long ponytail. Now we're talking. <laughs> Number one, two, button my shoe! You really need to stop making these kinds of jokes. They are just out of place, and they're not remotely funny. Princess Sally Acorn. There's a lot to say about this character. She's the heir to the throne, Sonic's first official romance, the only character that used to not wear clothes. First off, boots are considered clothes. Second of all, basically insinuating that Sally is naked. Wow, you really don't have any standards now, do you? Brave and athletic, the most humanoid character. How exactly is Sally considered the most humanoid? I said this back with Mina, but she looks just as much of an animal as all the other characters. To me, this is sounding like you can't come up with enough valid reasons for why you like a character, so you're just pulling shit out of your ass at this point. And is like a mother to tails. Oh, now you decide to bring up the whole mother issue? No, where the hell were you on that one with Vanilla and Julie Sue, for that matter? In the TV show Sonic Sat AM, one freedom fighter, the cowardly Antoine, constantly tries to woo Sally, but doesn't succeed because... he's a coward. The princess is also a semi-perfect example of an excellent love interest, although there were a couple of times when she really snapped and acted like a lunatic. In the comics, that is. But overall, Sally Acorn really stands out amongst the slew of females, not just because she's Sonic's first official love interest, or because she's the only one who didn't wear clothes. You are really hyper-focused on this not wearing clothes thing, are you? But because in the comics, she grew very long hair and married Sonic in the future, becoming the Queen. So really? matters when it comes to Sally is the fact that she has long hair and that she marries Sonic in Mobius X years later, which I remind you is not THE future, but a possible future. Oh, and we can't forget about the fact that she didn't wear clothes for a while. So, you've seen a pyrokinetic cat, a swallow, two gorgeous echidnas, and even a princess. Who could possibly top those kinds of females? Well, get ready, folks. This is the number one hottest Sonic the Hedgehog female character. Place your bets, everyone. Rouge the Bat. Wow, I totally didn't see that coming. Oh, I had to do that. That was the exact same thing I thought of when I saw this. If anybody denies it, how dare you? Yes, how dare does anybody disagree with your opinion? You know, God help the man that thinks another Sonic character like Amy or Sally or Bunny or Merlina or some other woman in the Sonic universe is hotter than Rouge. You know, that comment there really made you come off like a douchebag because not everyone is going to agree with your opinion. You know, if you think Rouge is the hottest, that's fine, but don't say how dare you if you disagree.
This woman can fly, she's as strong as Knuckles, and is a femme fatale seducing other characters into getting what she wants. Instead of having one love interest, she has two! Knuckles and Shadow the Hedgehog. Again, I gotta be a total buzzkill here, but the Shadow and Rouge pairing is very comparable to the Blaze and Silver pairing. It's not something that Sega has openly stated that's going to happen. This is more of a fan interpretation, if anything. You know, some people can interpret Rouge and Shadow being, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend, while others can see them as being maybe brother and sister, or just simply, you know, partners in a team. You know, you can't say that there's two love interests when Sega has openly stated one, and that's Knuckles. Being a treasure thief, she's only interested in one object set, jewels, especially the Chaos Emeralds. There actually have been situations where Rouge's cleavage has been exposed, but it eventually got censored. What a price to pay. Sonic X, at the end of the day, is a children's cartoon show. I'm aware in Japan they have a different rating system than from what we've got, but you know what? Even watching the Japanese version, it still comes off as a children's cartoon show. That being said, the whole Rouge's cleavage being censored bit, look, we all know that four kids did that so the parents wouldn't complain. And whether you agree with that or not, you know what, the whole censoring the cleavage thing, it wasn't exactly a big fucking deal. I mean, there was far worse that four kids did with Sonic X than, you know, toning down Rouge's boobs. The best examples I can think of are what happened to Maria and Molly. In the Japanese versions, both of those girls died, but when it was brought over here, that changed. This essentially changed Shadow's story, which I think you should be more concerned about than whether or not you get to see Rouge's awesome rocking tits. I think the best part about this beauty is that she wears three different outfits unlike the other female characters. Amy has worn just as many outfits, if not more. There was her first design from Sonic CD, there's her current design, her outfit that she wore from Sonic Riders, as well as the outfits that she wore in the Mario and Sonic Olympics games. So you can't say Rouge wore the most, because technically Amy's got her beat. And who wouldn't want to fly across the landscape, be as strong as Sean Johnson, and flirt with any male anytime, anywhere? I wouldn't mind the flying, and I wouldn't mind being as strong as Rouge. But would I ever want to flirt with every guy, even if I had Rouge's body? No. I personally would not. These three traits make Rouge the Bat triumph over all the Sonic the Hedgehog females. My hat goes off to you, Sonic Team USA. You ought to be proud. I can't believe I have to say this again. But there's more to a character than sex appeal, and this especially applies to Rouge. You know, Rouge is my favorite female Sonic character, I have stated that in the past. But I can guarantee the reasons why I like Rouge are very different from the reasons you like Rouge. You know, she's very quick to think, she's resourceful, she is strong, she's shown to be a very capable leader in Sonic Heroes. Sure, she'll help out. She used to help people for a price, but now she's, you know, just being selfless. You know, those are some of the reasons why I really like Rouge. Hell, I'm sure there are guys out there that think those qualities help make her attractive. But it's thanks to people like you that Rouge only is seen as being nothing more than sex appeal. It's times like this where I just even wonder why the hell do I bother trying to defend a character? There you have it, folks. Those were the hottest female chicks in the Sonic universe. I hope you enjoyed it. Happy Valentine's Day, and I'll see you later. Here we go! Props for using a different Rick Astley song for your credits other than Never Gonna Give You Up. No offense, guys, but that song is really starting to annoy me now. But time for my final thought. Overall, this video needed a lot of work. You really need to find better reasons for why you're placing the characters the way you did. You did decent with Wave and Julie Sue outside of that ponytail comment, but why not do the same for the others? I mean, it looked as if you couldn't find any reason other than you thought they were hot, or you were looking too hard for reasons that you will just bring up anything. Like I said before, pulling stuff out of your ass. 
You got hyper-focused on things that didn't need attention, you made useless jokes, and putting Cosmo on this list just makes you look like a pedophile. I'm done here, so I'll see you guys later. Have a great day.